God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. O? Here. Mr. Bison? Here. Mr. Calero? Here. Mr. Fry? Mrs. Love? Mr. Polakoski? Here. Mrs. Rhodes? Here. Mrs. Shipley? Here. Mr. Benz? Here. Kaylee Brocious? Here. Charles Eckerd? Here. Uh, that record shows seven present um, citizens' comments. I have no comment cards, Mr. President. Thank you. Before we move on, um, tonight is uh, the last meeting for Kaylee and Charles. So I have something for you. I assume you're both going on to college or some kind of a postgraduate thing, and the last thing we would ever want you to do is sleep in. <laughs> so. We have an alarm clock for you. <laughs> and it reads, has your name on it, uh, student representative, sophomore of the school board, 2016-2017. Thank you so much. So that is for you, and there's one for you as well. Thank you very much. So I'm going to put you on the spot and tell everybody what your future plans are. Um, nice and loud. I'm going to Westminster College located in New Wilmington, PA, and I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, but that is all my plans. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to the University of Pittsburgh main campus uh, for political science and maybe economics. Very good. Well, thank the two of you for being here thank very you faithfully. So much. Thank you. Minutes. It is recommended that the board approve the minutes of the discussion meeting of April 6, 2017, and the voting meeting of April 20, 2017. Need a motion, please? So be it. Motion by Mr. Beistel, second by Mr. Polkowski. Yes. Uh, questions? Roll call, please. I'm sorry. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0 with two absent. Uh, report, student report. Uh, congratulations to April Scotty Scholar, Kaylee Brocious. Uh, also congratulations to April Spirit of South Moreland student, Zachary Lee T. Uh, May Scotty Scholar was Madison Bodenheimer. May Spirit of South Moreland student was Casey Overly. And the two uh, Scotty Scholar Votech Award winners for the month of May were Casey Overly and Alexis Williams. Uh, BOTS IQ finals were on April 28th and 29th at California University of Pennsylvania. Uh, documentation binders uh, improved this year for the team. The team Anthrax achieved a score of 398.5 out of 450 possible, ranking 20th out of 79 teams in the competition. Team Fury achieved 384 out of 450 points, ranking 28th out of 79. Team Fury achieved one win by forfeit. Uh, Riverview High School did not show. Uh, Team Anthrax had an eventful bout with California High School uh, being flipped and still moving, wedged under the door of the battle arena, requiring the referee to use three crowbars to get it loose. <laughs> uh, overall ranking, which combines documentation, performance, and combat performance, uh, uh, Team Anthrax ranked 34 out of 79 teams, and Team Fury ranked 39 out of 79. Uh, they walked away in better shape than last year, but still have uh, a few improvements to do better next year. Um, there are uh, photos attached in the board docs if you want to look at those with the robots. Um, and they just wanted to thank the teachers, administration, industry supporters, and the school board for their support. Uh, the marching band traveled to D.C. last weekend, uh, the 13th and 14th of May. Uh, the band visited King's Dominion, Arlington National Cemetery, the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, and they did a night tour of the monuments in the uh, Washington Mall. At the primary center, uh, Ms. Kelly Durr's class partnered with the coffee shop workers um, uh, to uh, practice transition skills for some special needs students. Uh, the high school workers baked cookies and made hot chocolate for each of the primary uh, autistic students. Each primary student then came over to the coffee shop and practiced buying the cookies, milk, and hot chocolate. Uh, the high school students also had the opportunity to fill orders for the adult staff members as well as make change for each purchase. This was done in accordance with the students' IEPs, uh, which the state requires that they teach transition skills to all learning support students and uh, career skills beyond that. Um, just some dates coming up. The uh, 
CWCTC had their uh, senior recognition ceremony on May 16th, and uh, we have a senior picnic this year coming up on May 25th, and then class day is May 26th. Commencement rehearsal is uh, May 30th. The Scholars Banquet for the top 10% is May 31st, and commencement is obviously June 2nd. Um, the music department held a concert this past uh, Monday in honor of Dr. Monar, and uh, it featured st uh, students from grades five through grade 12. The Triad Music Honor Society are going to introduce a tutoring lesson at the elementary school, and they hope to continue this for years to come. And um, in addition, the students will run three st stations at South Long Elementary School evening with the arts on Wednesday, <coughs> May 10th. Um, the student council held a blood drive on April 20th. 62 students and eight teachers signed up to donate blood. The Red Cross reported that they are able to save 78 lives with uh, all the blood donations. Um, and then in the board docs is a list of all the GEM students. And then I would just like to say that I really appreciated this opportunity this year, and I really enjoyed watching all of you make all the changes that you did for our school district. I, I can't even imagine what this country could accomplish if every governing body uh, in the United States was run like this one. It's really been a pleasure working with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, CWCTC report. I do not have a report, Mr. Thank you. WIE report is absent. PSB liaison report. Yeah, just a little short thing here. Uh, last week, the House Commerce Committee approved House Bill 1213, and that's legislation that prohibits taxing bodies seeking appeals of underassessed properties, only allowing appeals to be sought under very limited circumstances. This House bill was amended to change the definition of quote unquote market value to prohibit consideration of quote encumbrances uh, end quote such as leases it would enable commercial businesses to appeal their tax bills and be valued <coughs> as if the property were vacant buildings and that would be like they would be up for sale the assessment would be on the building only and would not include the contents or the revenue it would generate the argument is that these buildings are so specific to their purpose that if they left a new buyer could not use the structure as is. And this is known as, quote, uh, dark store, end quote. Dark store loopholes. Uh, the purpose is to uh, reduce the amount of taxes uh, owed by millions and making it difficult for uh, local taxing bodies to tax these businesses for their uh, fair share. PSBA's conservative estimate of a 25% reduction of school districts assessed commercial property value showed a potential revenue loss to districts of over 677 million. This estimate is based on the, Depart the Department of Community and Economic uh, Development using the 2015 property values and the 2015-16 millage rates. Now, they did uh, a big long list of all the school districts in the state, so I looked up a few of them. Uh, South Moreland's potential loss if this bill would be passed would be $446,597. Connors bills would be $415,778,000. Mount Pleasant would be $423,120, and York would be $295,158. Uh, so I would uh, urge everyone to please contact our representative, Ryan Warner's office, tell him to please vote no on House Bill 1213. And that, uh, his information is on the website, so uh, please uh, take a few minutes tomorrow and please do this. I'd appreciate it. And I think all the districts, but uh, it's to the district's best interest. So uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent's report. Yeah, um, uh, first of all, I had the privilege of attending the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association Conference in Erie that was on April 20 and 21. I also represented the district by throwing out the first pitch for the South Moreland Youth Baseball Program on Saturday, April 22nd. Unfortunately, the ball bounced over home plate, but it got to the catcher eventually. <laughs> I uh, participated in several evening negotiation sessions between SEIU and the district. Um, 
several administrators and I, along with Mr. Kiefer, attended a demonstration of the Mobile Emergency Response Plan system that we're planning to um, implement this coming year. I met or spoke with several parents throughout the course of the month. I worked with our school police officers. We initiated protocols and responded to several situations. I addressed personnel situations with both professional and non-professional employees. I participated in the forum for Western Pennsylvania superintendents on April 26, 27, and 28. I attended meetings of the Westmoreland County Workforce Development Forum, the Westmoreland County Superintendents Association, and the Westmoreland County Public Schools Healthcare Rate Stabilization Consortium. Uh, we used our mass messaging, messaging system, our website, and Facebook to inform parents about the stray bullet at the primary center as well as the cancellation to the core of the course concert due to tornado warnings. Mr. Marnell and I spent a great deal of time together during the past month trying to trim down the proposed budget. We'll have a discussion about that later. I attended uh, Monday's concert given by students in grade 5 through 12 that Kaylee already mentioned. And Mr. Krofcheck, Mrs. Santamont and I met with representatives of the National Math and Science Initiative this week. We're very excited to be a part of that project. Um, there were meetings with Johnson Controls and the Jacobs Creek Watershed Group about upcoming projects. Um, if you don't remember, quite a while back we approved uh, Jacobs Creek Watershed Association to do a project in the area where the buses park for football games. And I believe one of the, maybe the upper parking lot at the high school, they're going to put um, a permeable asphalt in there so that the uh, rainwater drains through the asphalt uh, and works its way through the groundwater systems that are running off into uh, into the tributary of Jacobs Creek. Now, Mr. Marnell was able to uh, speak with Johnson Controls about the charges for the measurement and value engineering. Um, the cost for this was um, an articulated part of the original agreement and they're not willing to waive the fee. Um, they did provide us with written responses and I attached those to the superintendent's report. And if you uh, noticed when you logged into your board docs tonight, our website does have a new look and we now have a presence on Facebook and Twitter in addition to our long-standing YouTube channel. That concludes my report, sir. Thank you. And I have noticed the website does look really nice, so let's go to different times. Uh, solicitor's report. Um, attached to your uh, documents is a copy of the order report that was obtained by the Scott Del Barra solicitor um, to uh, permit um, a postponement or continuance of the uh, potential sale of the um, Scottsdale Eagles property in the borough of Scottsdale, which had gone into the uh, tax repository um, that had mistakenly, uh, it, it, it was supposed to have been continued and mistakenly the judge's office sent out an incorrect order and so you had authorized me to consent um, that uh, they would uh, have a six-month extension in trying to put in plain English what this is all about um, the land bank uh, folks won't uh, be able to obtain the property uh, until the tax status is uh, settled and more importantly probably the cost of the demolition is resolved and Scott Del Burrow, solicitor, I, I believe, is trying to pursue um, getting a, a financial uh, liability against the national organization to bear um, costs in relation to the demolition of the building so that the local Scott Del Burrow taxpayers who are uh, coterminous with part of our school district don't get stuck with that cost. And so the, ju the judge has allowed him six months to uh, pursue that, uh, or at least get started with pursuing it. And I just wanted to let you know, in case somebody went and looked at the website uh, at the county level, that a mistaken order had been entered and now corrected. Um, the other item is just an item of information that um, the school district's insurance company has appointed uh, Susan Roberts who's an attorney at the Peacock Keller uh, Law Firm in Washington to represent the school district's interests in the case of Linda Butai versus Southmoreland School District, uh, which uh, comes out of the transfer of entity situation at the uh, Central Westmoreland area of a tech vocational technical school. Uh, finally, not on um, your website, um, some stuff has come up 
since the beginning of a month and particularly even since Tuesday and I will need to discuss with you in uh, executive session uh, potential for litigation or matters about which complaints are expected plus you, uh, to be um, brought uh, in relation to a right to know request by uh, an individual by the name of Simon Campbell uh, who served uh, a list of 27 different items uh, that he's seeking from um, uh, the right to know officer here for South Moreland. And uh, as a result, we may have to come back and I may have to ask you, have you vote on something after I inform you about that. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, business and finance bills payable treasury report. It is recommended that the board approve the April 2017 board summary check summary report and the March 2017 treasurer's report. Need a motion, please? Motion by Mr. Calero, second? Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes, questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bicester? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Pelikoski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes, motion passes seven to zero with two absent. Posting a proposed budget for 2017-18 school year. It is recommended that the board post the 2017-2018 proposed budget for a period of 30 days. Need a motion, please? Second. Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mr. Paul Koski. Questions? Yes, I have a question. Yes. If, um, I realize if we post it, we can still make adjustments to the, um, to the budget. We'll be able to do um, whatever we need to do with it. That is um, correct. If, if, we, if we do not do that, though, if we do not tonight resolve to pass the budget as it is, um, I know we have to, 30 days, we have to post it. What happens if July the 1st, we don't have a budget? What consequences are there that we suffer from the state or anybody else if we fail to have a budget? You're not allowed to spend money. So therefore, as we had a couple of years ago, um, your employees won't get paid after July 1st. With the exception of those who have earned their money prior to July 1st. For example, our, our teachers earn their money September Please. through June, and then we hold right. a portion of their salary back, and, and then it would be all non teaching positions. Would uh, be. But it would include your custodians, uh, your administrators, your secretaries, mostly your 12 month employees. If you, if I may add, I, I, I don't disagree with what Dr. Molnar has said, but in addition to that, if you don't qualify for there's only one or two circumstances described in the school code that would excuse you from doing that. In plain English, you're going to really mess up your ability to uh, levy taxes. So if we approve the budget on July the 5th, let's say, let's say we posted it on June the 5th and we had 30 days in July the 5th, we would be five days beyond the date. We would not be able to pay anybody for those five days until we but, I mean, again, I understand what you're saying, David, but I'm not talking no, about... No, I'm saying things. something different. No, no, I know. I realize that. You're saying, I'm just saying that we're talking about things that could happen, and if we were to go 60, 90 days, I could understand that. But no. you're saying no. You're saying one day beyond. You may be messing up, as an example, you may be messing up the lien of the priority of the taxes by not having it in existence on July 1 and cause uh, us to fall behind other creditors uh, in certain situations. And the deeper question, which I, I don't know that I can speak off the cuff, I don't want to do that, uh, is to whether you're imperiling your ability to actually assess any taxes. Until you pass the budget? No. At all? Yeah. I, I started to look into that once and um, I hadn't resolved it, so I don't want to give you a final opinion on that tonight. But just to, uh, I mean, if there's a concern that you don't have enough time, then your other way out is to um, have another meeting in the month of May at which you would post the budget so that you could still have 30 days to get in by the end of June to pass the budget. Uh, I see that as a legal um, means of, of dealing with that kind of an issue. 
Well, isn't it true? I mean, there may be a big difference, but uh, the state doesn't pass a budget. It still collects its taxes. How do we differ? They're the sovereign. They, they make up the rules. <laughs> we're peons. Plain English. We're, we're down the uh, food chain. Would it also affect our credit rating? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. I, I wasn't prepared to address this subject tonight, but I mean, there's a bunch of things that can really. Uh, and another question could be raised about whether or not you could be removed for failing to do your duty. And if, I call them please. I, I don't. I don't disagree with any of those things, David. I'm just saying that if you're telling me that on July the first we don't have a budget, every one of those things happen. We lose our credit rating. We uh, we could be removed from. First of all, and again, what government entity, particularly the state, moves that fast? But again, I understand the basics here. You're basically saying that those all things are that we're at risk for, and I understand that. Who would you say is responsible? Who did you say would be responsible for not having done their job? Uh, there are situations in which uh, taxpayers can petition common police court to uh, remove um, school board directors for failing to perform the mandatory duty. It's very rare and the circumstances are very limited, but passing an annual budget is one of the things you have to do as distinct from a lot of other things that you may or may not do. Well, the people elected us to decide if too much money is spent and we say no, that is part of our job also. What, but this is the more extreme position of not having done a, a mandatory duty as distinct from the level of spending. You just you didn't do anything. You didn't prove anything. Any other questions or comments? We have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Bystow. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. O? No. Mr. Maestro? Benz, I'm sorry, Mr. Benz. What you got to do? Um, um, sorry, I'm going to decide. I'm trying to think what I want to do. I'll say yes, I'm going to keep the process moving, but we need to get it worked on. So that's five to two with two absent. Is that correct, five to two? Five to two, is that correct? Yes. Right. Yeah, that's five votes is good enough for you. Yeah. Old business, seeing none, uh, new business, NIMSI. It's recommended that the board approve a memorandum of understanding with the National Map and Science Initiative. And that is attached to your board docs for your review. Um, CWCTC budget. How about a vote? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, new motion. Motion by Mrs. Rhodes, second. Second. Second by Mr. Paul Koski. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Yes. Mr. O? Yes. Mr. Bice? Yes. Mr. Bats? Yes. Motion passes two, I'm sorry, seven with two absent. CWCTC 2017-18 budget. It's recommended that the board approve the 2017-2018 <coughs> Central Westmoreland Career and Technology Center budget. Need a motion, please? I make that motion. Motion by Mr. Paul Koski, second. Second. Second by Mr. Bystool. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Paul Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bystow? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Bench? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0 with two absent. Adelphi Education Services? It's recommended that the board approve an agreement with Adelphi Educational Services for the 2017 2018 school year. Motion, please. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. Questions? Roll call, please. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. 
Mr. O? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calera? Yes. Mr. Palakowski? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes, motion passes seven to zero, two absent. Maintenance and electrical supply bids? It's recommended that the board approve the 2017-18 bid summary for maintenance, paper, and electrical supplies. AGF Company, $1,449.75. LM Colker, $9,417.26. Fagan the Sanitary Supply, $13,486.32. Uh, Janitor Supply, $14,453.58. Pioneer Manufacturing Company, $2,222. Pit chemical five hundred nineteen dollars and fifty four cents. That's a total um, in those categories of forty one thousand five hundred forty eight dollars and forty five cents. You have a motion, please. I make that motion. Motion by Mr. Polakowski. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Bicycle. Questions. Roll call, please. Mrs. Shipley. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mr. Bicycle. Yes. Mr. Calero. Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes, motion passes 7 to 0 with two absent. Athletic supply bids? It's recommended that the board approve the 2017 2018 bid summary for athletic supplies as listed. American Aluminum Equipment $810, BSN Sports $3,146.37, Century Sports $4,496.76. MFAC $88, Medco $3,824.93, Natal Sports $19,886.64, Rydell Equipment $840, Sportsman $7,160.17 for a total of $40,252.87. Need a motion please? So be it. Motion by Mr. Bicycle, second? Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes, questions? Roll call, please. I, I I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, there had been a question raised by one of our absent board members uh, about um, Madeline Sports and exactly what we were paying for in that. And um, I believe, and I have, I have a copy of the email on on my on, on my computer, but I have a copy of it. And I don't think the answer was specific enough to provide the information. Um, I was just wondering if we could get some more clarification, but Charlie's not here. Um, we can, but, but I can't give it to you because I don't have it off the top of my head. I know we buy, Dan, maybe you can help from Nat Natalie. Uh, a lot of our uniforms come from them. Um, Yeah, the way these work is there's there's a list of supplies, right? And if you're bidding on on track shirts, right. you know, you, you've been and whoever is the lowest bidder gets gets that award. And Tally is often the low bidder on many of those things. Um, I guess one of my questions would be, and I think this is the one, and it was Amy that, that had raised this issue, is that um, if in fact they are usually the low bidder, and, and we do well having them. Um, and, and Charlie specifically said that it, it allows him to have more money in his budget because they're the low bidder. Um, the question becomes then, maybe the budget is incorrect for that. I mean, we're budgeting this much money, but if in fact they're always the low bidder and they actually end up with, let's say, um, we end up spending $15,000 instead of $19,000, um, are, are we, I mean, are we accurately reflecting in our budget what they're really going to be charging us because again I, I have a statement in here from charlie that says that he's been able to use the excess money to buy other equipment and right. other things he needed well then that would mean to me that if that's regularly happening that you're over budgeting for them and on us approving them to get nineteen thousand dollars doesn't we shouldn't be doing that we should be approving a budget more realistic than nineteen thousand dollars well one of the things that mr Marnell and i have done and it's a very good question thank you um, over the last three weeks, um, we've been looking at actual expenditures and, and right-sizing the budget. Um, and as a result of that, we came up with, I believe, $500,000 uh, 
a week or so ago that we reported back to you, and um, we have additional cuts as well. So what we try to do is we, we took actual expenditures, and that's what we budgeted. So we didn't say, oh yeah, well you budgeted this last year, that's what we're going to budget again this year, but we went on actuals. Actual expenditures from last year, or actual what they're going to purchase? See, what I'm saying is here, we know up front that they always come in low bidding what we are giving them a budget for. They always come in lower than that because it was stated that we end up with some extra money in the budget because we don't actually need to spend $19,000. But even though we budget that, it seems to be used anyway. And that, at least that's what Charlie said in his statement, that when he has excess monies because their bid has been so good, it doesn't come back into the budget it's used to buy additional equipment or materials. And I'm just saying, if that's happening with this particular contractor, is it happening with other ones? Or, again, I, I'm just, I, again, I'm just, that's a lot of money to put for one person or one, one sports program that we're paying for. And based on what I'm hearing and what Charlie said, it's probably a high bid because he's always getting money back from them. And no, again, no, no, he doesn't get money back. You know, he, he, pay, he uses less of that money than he... No, he uses less money. They're the low bidder, so he's spending less than he would if he bought from somebody else, I think is how I interpreted what he wrote. Well, but maybe I interpreted that wrong. Well, I interpreted that he said that what ends up happening is because when they come in with a lower bid and he pays less, he's able to buy more equipment. Well, this is the quote that they give us. Okay. That's what they charge us. Okay, no matter what. We, they never come in lower than that. We don't get any additional things. Okay. Jim, am I correct on that? I mean, like what they bid is what we pay, right? We don't well, pay less than the bid. You know, uh, the athletic department puts together a, a list of, of items, specifications, X number of basketballs, baseballs, bats, so on and so forth. All, all the accoutrements that go into running all the various sports, socks, and whatever. And then these companies you know, return the, the bid sheets with you know, uh, a bid price for each item. And then uh, Charlie and Laura you know, examine that and then they come up with a, a recommendation, um, you know, who the low bidders are on those various items. And then they, they accumulate those totals for uh, each vendor. Um, so let's do a what if. So what if that happens with Natalie and they give us this as their bid. And when they start providing the equipment, let's say for some reason, which is what the impression I got, was that let's say they say, you know what, it really the equipment that you that we bid on and that we say we provide, instead of being $19,886, it only really cost you $18,886. And you actually have an extra thousand dollars here, so you know, do you, do you, what do you do with it? That doesn't no, happen. I, I, You're not I've saying that that's, seen, no. that's not happy. So we pay no. out that money right off the top, and we pay for So we're paying exactly what we bid for. That's, so if we that's bid the, for. That's the total of the items that they, they bid okay. on that were, they were the lowest price on those items, and that's their share of the, the bid package. It's the same as our, our gasoline right. bid when we, yeah. Yeah, when we, they said we'll sell you gas for three nineteen a gallon, then they don't sell, well. Right. We'll sell it for 289 instead. Now this this is the once the bid is awarded. That's and what I understand they that, but that's not. It, it did not appear that's what Charlie was saying. It sounded like they the, that they were coming in with an actual lower amount that they were charging us, but that we were then spending up to that amount by adding additional equipment. I, I do not believe that to be the okay. case. I, right. I think okay. it was either misarticulated or misinterpreted. Okay. But we will we will check on that and get back to you for sure. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Maisto? Yes. Mr. Kalara? Yes. Mr. Palakoski? Yes. Mrs. Rowe? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Matt? Yes, motion passes 702 absent. School physician. It's recommended the board authorize the continuation of the agreement with Excella. As the district's school physician, this agreement renews yearly unless either party elects not to continue. Need a motion, please? So good. Motion by Mr. Beistel, second. Second. Second by Mr. Paul Koski. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. <coughs> yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Palakoski? Yes. Mr. Matt? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Kalara? Yes. Mr.
Palakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes, motion passes 7 to 0. New club at the high school? I would like to table this uh, to the June meeting. Um, the students were not able to be here this evening. We need to voice that. Uh, we need a motion to table that, please. Okay. Motion by Mr. Polakowski, second by Mrs. Rhodes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 7 0 2 absent. Uh, safe touches. It's recommended that the board approve a letter of commitment with the Westmoreland County Children's Bureau for the provision of the safe touches program to second graders with the caveat that the providers obtain parental consent for the program and assessment participation along with inclusion in the assessment database. Need a motion, please? So moved. Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mr. Paul Koski. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Paul Koski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Bats? Yes. Motion passes 7 0, with two absent. Paulina Heights? It's recommended that the board approve a service agreement with Clayling and Heights for the 2017-2018 school year. Motion, please. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes, question. Roll call, please. Mr. Palakowski. Yes. Mrs. Rhodes. Yes. Mrs. Shipley. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mr. Beistel. Yes. Mr. Calero. Yes. Mr. Metz. Yes, motion passes 7 0, 2 absent. Need a motion to recess for personnel and possible litigation. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Rhodes, second. Second. Second by Mr. Calero. Questions? Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Second by Mrs. Rhodes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Personnel, Board Secretary. It's recommended that the Board reappoint Margaret Tarzan as Board Secretary at a salary increase of 3% per year for a four year term. Need a motion, please? So be it. Motion by Mr. Beistel, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes. Roll call, please. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes, motion passes 7 0, 2 absent. Board Treasurer? It's recommended that the board reappoint Robert Calero as board treasurer for the Southmoreland School Board for the 2017 18 fiscal year with no additional compensation. Need a motion, please? Tell me that back there, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask. <laughs> I, have qu I have a question on that motion. <laughs> so, so, be it. Motion by Mrs. Rhodes, second by Mr. Beistel. Roll call, please. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Fry? I'm sorry. Mr. Palakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Matz? Yes, motion passes 7-0, two absent. 2017-18 uh, marching band instructors. It's recommended that the board approve the following individuals as band instructors. Woodland instructor, Van Hannigan, color guard instructor, Beth Butera. Percussion instructor, Dustin Miller. Band equipment driver, Jim Springer. Assistant band equipment driver, Larry Greenewald. Volunteers, Jim Hannigan, June Gord. Megan Burke-Swope, Nick Driscoll, Megan Rockter. Jess Fasano, pending clearances, and authorized administration to post and advertise the positions of brass instructor and assistant marching band director. Need a motion, please? Second. Motion by Mr. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mr. Calero. Roll call, please. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Meistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes, motion passes 7 0, 2 absent. Assistant golf coach? It's recommended that the board approve Kimberly Kelly as the assistant golf coach for the 2017 18 school year at the supplemental salary of $2,431. Need a motion, please? I make the motion. Motion by Mr. Polakowski, second. 
Second. Second by Mrs. Shipley. Roll call, please. Mr. Baisto. Yes. Mr. Calero. Yes. Mr. Polakowski. Yes. Mrs. Rhodes. Yes. Mrs. Shipley. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mr. Benz. Yes. Motion passes seven zero with two absent. Uh, resignation of assistant middle school girls soccer coach. It's recommended that the board accept the resignation of Daniel Boring as the assistant middle school girls soccer coach and authorize the administration to post and advertise the position. Need a motion, please? So be it. Motion by Mr. Bystel, second. Uh, second by Mrs. Shipley. Roll call, please. Mr. Calero. Yes. Mr. Polakowski. Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. All? Yes. Mr. Bystone? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes. Motion passes 7-0, two absent. <laughs> I answered Motion. for him. He had a mouthful of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. You can't. You've got a mouthful of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> School dentist? <laughs> It's recommended the board reappoint Dr. Jennifer Sewilla Gill as the school dentist. Dr. Gill is located at 322 Pittsburgh Street, Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. Need a motion, please? Second. Motion by Mrs. Rhodes, second. Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. Roll call, please. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. All? Yes. Mr. Bicycle? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes, motion passes 702 absent. Team leaders. It's recommended that the board open the following team leader positions grade one, grade five, grade six at the elementary level and at the high school level English language arts, <coughs> mathematics, social studies, science, and special education. Need a motion, please? Hello. Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mr. Beistel. Roll call, please. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bystel? Yes. Mr. Next Calero? One. Yeah, it's just discussion in the back. So yes. Mr. Doing Benz? Anything out here with that. Uh, yes, motion passes 7 0 2 absent. <coughs> Second grade. Oh, okay. Um, high school specialist team leader? It's recommended that the board approve the creation of a high school specialist team leader position at a supplemental salary of $2,500. Need a motion, please? So moved. Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes, roll call, please. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Bystel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes, motion passes 7 0, two absent. Uh, retirement? It's recommended that the board accept with regrets the retirement of Patricia Croft, elementary teacher, at the end of the 2016-17 school year. Need a motion, please? So moved. Motion by Mr. Calero, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Shipley. Roll call, please. Mr. Maestro? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Palakoski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes, motion passes 702 absent. Retirement? It's recommended that the board accept with regrets the retirement of Donnie Kalp as administrative secretary effective June 30, 2017. I think Donnie has um, held positions in the elementary schools at Ruffsdale, at Southmoreland Intermediate Elementary School. She was a guidance secretary, an attendance secretary a discipline secretary, secretary to the principal, finally moved to central office after that. So worn a lot of hats and has done a lot of good work for us over the years. Forty years is a long time. Need a motion, please? So moved with three breaths. Motion by Mrs. Rhodes, second. So be it. Second by Mr. Beistel. Roll call, please. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Palakoski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bice? Yes. Mr. Mann? Yes, motion passes 7 0 2 absent. Uh, rough still, is that just a place? That's just a, uh, yeah. Um, personal care assistant? It's recommended that the board accept the resignation of Deborah Galley as personal care assistant for the Southmoreland Middle School effective immediately. Motion, please. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. 
Roll call, please. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Palakowski? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes, motion passes 702 absent. New agenda item? Yeah, this is uh, Summer Helpers. It's recommended that the board approve the summer employment of the following individuals. Jacob Beistel, Jordan Brown, Jennifer Firestone, Seth King, Austin Macbeth, Tiffany Stone, and Jacob Stoner. Motion, please. So moved. Motion by Mr. Shipley, second. Second. Second by Mr. Calero. Roll call, please. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? I abstain. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Polkowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Benz. Yes, motion passes 7 0, 2 absent. Solicitors? Six. I'm sorry, yes, correct. One Thank abstain. you. 6 0 with 2 absent, 1 abstention. Thank you. Solicitor services? Uh, Thank you. I need a motion and a second on a resolution that the board reappoints David G. Patonic with offices at 314 C Porter Avenue, Scott DLPA as solicitor beginning July 1, 2017. And that would be per the attached resolution uh, that is on board docs and we will um, make that uh, resolution we'll put it in the public section of board docs so that it is visible to the public need a motion please so moved motion by mr claro second 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 by mr polakowski roll call please mr all no mr bystel uh yes mr claro yes Mr. Palakoski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Uh, motion passes 6, 1, and 2 absent. Um, anything from, uh, we have a, a resolution from the solicitor. Oh, okay. Do you want me to read it? Why don't you, uh, uh, oh, here, with this score. Go ahead, Dave. Please do. Whereas the South Island Open Records Officer received on May 2017 a right to know request form from Simon Campbell as the requester containing 27 separate items which he is seeking only in electronic format here and after the request, which apparently was sent to 600 agencies in Pennsylvania. Whereas items 15 through 22 relate to financial payments and expenses of PSBA and not South Warren School District, and upon investigation by the solicitor with business manager and board secretary, it appears the South Warren School District does not have possession of the records being requested. Whereas this is part of a mass mailing by Simon Campbell to potentially all the school districts in Pennsylvania, whereas South Warren School Boards Association, PSBA, has offered to represent the individual school districts in the event that they do not have possession of those items, Whereas the Board of School Directors does not wish to commit local taxpayer resources to litigate whether Southmoreland can be forced to require PSBA either to supply copies of said records responsive to items 15 through 22 to Southmoreland for ultimate response to the above request or to require PSBA supply directly. Now, therefore, a motion of blank, second by blank, be it resolved that. In the event that the South Orleans Open Records Officer determines in consultation with this district solicitor that responses to items 15 to 22 of the above request are not possessed by South Orleans School District and issues a denial they, that they are not in possession of any records responsive to those items and those items are appealed by the requester, then the board authorizes the Pennsylvania School Boards Association and its chosen council to represent the interests of South Warren School District and its open re records officer as to items 15 through 22 before the Pennsylvania Office of Open Records or the Court of Common Pleas in the event of a first level appeal. Uh, the district solicitor will continue to advise and represent the South Warren Open Records Officer as to the balance. The Open Records Officer is Mrs. Margaret Tars. And I have recommended this resolution to the school board. Do we have a motion? Motion by Mr. Calero, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes. Questions since it was non-agenda item. Roll comment, call. Comment by the public. I'm oh, sorry, looking at Oh, up. you said question, but I'm comment. sorry. Comment from the audience since it's non-agenda. Roll call, please. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. 
Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes, motion passes 7 0, 2 absent. Um, does Mrs. Shipley and Mr. Yes. Polakowski want to reopen the posting of the proposed budget vote that you cast earlier? I think it has to be them. It's the board vote, or anybody can vacate it. Okay, right? anybody vacate Or does it have to be the one that made the motion in the second to vacate this vote? I'll be somebody on the prevailing side. Oh, okay. It's somebody in the five who voted for it. So any of the five that voted to post the budget, do you wish to vacate it? Vacate that motion? And vote so again? And repost it differently uh, following a, a budget meeting? So that we can look it over? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Well, you would, you, you, you would vacate the approval that, uh, to post the budget as you did tonight, and that would mean that you would either have to further discuss it tonight or set another meeting so that it would still be 30 days before the end of the fiscal year. And the purpose for doing that, um, when a budget is posted, we, we can trim as much as we choose to, and that's, that's a non-issue. Um, but one of the um, possible recommendations uh, would be to include a tax increase in, in the posted budget. And if you choose to do that, you would need to vacate the motion to post the budget. Then I would recommend that you have another meeting to talk about that before you repost it. So well, when we also talk about those items that were submitted? No, that would be at another meeting as well, yeah. Okay, then I would go along with vacating. So a motion by Mr. Holt. Second. Sector Holt vote to post. Did you vote yes? Voted to vacate it. No. The, in the original You're, motion. We no, voted against it. Oh, voted okay. Against so, it. So, so you can't make the motion. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so okay. Vote. Yeah, so you I can vote, vote, but you can't make the motion procedural. <laughs> so Mrs. Shipley, motion, and Mr. Beistel, second. Trying to keep you out of trouble here, Ken. <laughs> you can't so, vote for and then against. So we, have a, <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Um, to vacate. To vacate the motion to post the budget. Right, yeah. So, can we do a roll call? Yes. Who made the motion? I made the motion. Mr. Shepard. Okay. So, all those in favor say aye. aye. No, roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Roll call, please. Sorry. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes, motion passes 7 0 with two absent. Um, before we schedule a budget meeting. So you either have to talk a lot more tonight or schedule another meeting to Adopt a proposed uh, post budget. the proposed budget. And that has to be before the on or before May 30th. Mm -hmm. What's June 30th? Jack, you indicated that you want to give us some time to go over this so we could I have I think that would make sense. So I gave you a lot of information. Another meeting, Maybe uh, next Thursday, which would be the 25th. Fifth. That fits everybody's calendar. You guys don't have to come. You got your clocks. You're good. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna re-advertise to do yeah, another to proposed budget, right? Is there any sense to doing it? That's not for us to question. That's true. Still need a set of date in June. Well, the date in June yeah. then would have to be June the 25th. Or, or, let, or before. Right, right, right now, right now it was June 19th or later. It's at least 30 days, so it could right. be the 25th, 26th, 27th. Right. Right. It could be the 25th or later. Right. So we'll just have to have another meeting, which we will then vote for the budget. Okay, so we'll, yeah. at this point in time, we would entertain a motion to schedule a budget meeting for next Thursday. Right. So it would so be good. June. 25th. Or later? Yeah. Well, let me see if it's okay with the finance chair since he'll be running the meeting. He seconded the motion. Yeah, oh. Okay, sorry. So, motion by Mrs. Shipley, seconded by Mr. Colero. All those in favor? I'm sorry. We need to advertise, so I guess we're we'll going to roll. Roll call, please. Mr. Kalkowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr.
Mrs. Yes. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Bentz? Yes. Motion passes 7-0, 2 absent. 7 o'clock here at the middle school. 7 o'clock at the middle school. Can you advertise that tomorrow, please? Did you ask for comment from the public? There is no public. No. No. <laughs> Um, any board members have anything for public consumption? I, I think I'd make a recommendation that Butch get away from those cookies over there. I want to see. He's going to be choking on them. I don't want to. I, don't want to, I, I think you ought to sit over here, Butch. <laughs> you can't say anything. you got a mom for them, Butch. <laughs> Need a motion to adjourn? So be it. Most of my Mrs. Rhodes, second by Mr. Bryce. To all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you, everybody, for...